Hey, what is up everyone? Hope you're all doing well. So today is just going to be a bit of a short and sharp video, pretty much just updating you all on basically what happened with Med. And in case you haven't figured it out already, I did not get an offer this year. But that is completely okay. That is all good. <laughs> no, but seriously, when I found out, you know, I did feel pretty disappointed, a bit disheartened. I was a bit upset, naturally, as anybody would have, but I gave myself my two days of grieving and now I've accepted it and we're onwards and upwards from here. I will most definitely be applying for Med again next year. So I feel that when we experience these moments of rejection, there's basically two ways that we can go about it, right? Now, the first option is that we can either lament over the decision, kick ourselves about it, feel awful, and just obsess over it for the next couple days or weeks or whatever. But that doesn't really do us any good, you know? Thinking about the decision and feeling bad and thinking about all of the things that you could have done better or differently and running through every single scenario about what could have potentially been done differently, <laughs> it's not good for anybody. It's not gonna make you feel any better. So there's just no point going on about it in your head all day, right? And then option number two is to simply accept it, recognize that, hey, I clearly wasn't a good enough applicant this time around. How about I figure out where I went wrong, move on, see it as a bit of a learning experience, and then improve upon ourselves so that next time we can be better. Now, just saying that obviously is much easier than actually doing it and putting it into practice. And for me, over this last week, there have been two kind of ideas of thinking about it or two methods that have really, really helped me to put this all into perspective, right? Because as I've spoken about a couple of times in this channel, you are not medicine, medicine isn't your identity and medicine does not define you. You have to be able to live your life outside of that whole medic world, right? So I'm just gonna jump into these two perspectives right now. All right, so before I get stuck into these kind of two little ideas, I just wanna mention that these are applicable for absolutely anything. Like yes, I'm applying it to medicine and I'm sure a couple of you watching this, unfortunately, may also be applying it to medicine this year, but it can be used for anything, for any other job offer, like you use it for anything. So the first thing was actually mentioned to me by M, my girlfriend, when we were talking about it after I found out. So the way she summed it up was that I'd been living in this circle and within this circle was medicine. And then there was this outer circle surrounding that, which was all the other aspects of my life. And I'd been living the last quite a few number of months within this tiny circle of medicine and disregarding all of these outer aspects. Like sure, I was still doing other things, I was still studying, like playing piano and doing things, but I wasn't purposefully noticing them and taking stock and appreciating them. I was just so zeroed in on this one specific goal that I essentially just disregarded everything else. And a big worry for me going into next year was that I wouldn't have anything to do. You know, I finished studying my degree at the end of this year. I'm not getting into medicine. What am I going to do for the next 12 months of my life? And the way that she said I should tackle that is to swap the circle, is just invert the whole thing. So now that I have a forced break ahead of me, essentially coming up, swap it. So that way I have this one circle, this inner circle that I'm heavily focusing on, which is life, which is all the things that I can do outside of university. Things like, I wanna start exercising more. I wanna get into photography. You know, I wanna really dig in and really start trying to learn my piano really, really well. Like find a teacher and stay consistent with it. And then on this outer circle can be things like medicine. The other things that I'm thinking about, but I'm not totally 100% zeroed in almost every day, which I honestly think is a really, really positive and great way to approach things. And I probably should have been focusing on this a lot more over the past year because I don't really agree with the notion on having all of your happiness from life stem from one aspect. I think it's good to, you know, diversify our happiness, you could say, and try and find avenues where we can be satisfied and feel joy and enjoyment from other aspects as much as possible. And now the second way of thinking about things was actually came from one of my friends who is currently a third year medical student at Deakin at the moment. And basically the way he spoke about it was that like getting into medicine is a spectrum. And so say if reaching the interview stage is say three quarters or halfway down that spectrum, 
once you get into that last third or that last half, you are splitting applicants by hairs. So it's such a tiny margin of difference into whether you get accepted or not that there's no real definitive way to separate the difference between an applicant who gets in and an applicant who doesn't. And the way he got me thinking about it was that I haven't failed this year at getting into medicine. All that I have done is that I've just moved a little bit further along the spectrum. However, I haven't quite tipped the threshold to be accepted. So if we see it as that spectrum, and I know that say I've reached this point, all I need to do is then reapply next year and just be that one or 2% better to nudge the dial a little bit more across, and that could be enough to get me in. That could be enough to get you in. I know I'm talking a lot about myself and medicine, but it can be applied to anything. I really think these are really crucial ways to frame your thinking when dealing with rejection just in general. If you are passionate about something and you care enough to put in 12 months of your life or more into achieving this goal, then you can't let just one setback or one failure completely rid any chances of you ever achieving that goal. You gotta pick yourself up and you have to go again because we're all good applicants, right? We all have the potential to be great doctors if you've made it this far already. All you have to do is just stay consistent, keep at it and work hard and we'll all get there. So with all that out of the way, basically my plans for these next 12 months are I'm going to sit the GAMSAT again in March because I feel like I can do better on the GAMSAT. I mean, a 59 did get me an interview this year but I just feel like if I had a 60, 61, maybe even a 62 if I'm really, really lucky, that just might be enough to tip me a little bit further and that'd be a spot. <laughs> I can't really say I'm looking forward to that, but something I've got to do, I guess. As I mentioned, I want to focus a lot more on aspects outside of university. So, so I really want to start exercising more and getting into a good gym routine. I really want to start getting into photography because that's been something I've always been really interested in, but I've just never really stuck to. And me and Em actually moving back home as well because I don't know if you guys know, but in Victoria and Australia anyway, house prices are just absurd. And Em and I are kind of getting to that point now where we'd like to buy a house and actually have somewhere to call our home. So the easiest and best way for us to do that is to actually move home with my parents. We'll stay there for a year, maybe two, and hopefully buy a house in the next year or two. So despite everything that's happened in the last week, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Things are looking up and I've got a really, really exciting year coming up actually. And to everybody who didn't get into medicine this year as well, forget about it. Put it out of your mind. Doesn't matter, we can't change it. All we can do is make ourselves the best possible applicant for next year. And if you did get in, then congrats. I'm really happy for you. Absolutely enjoy it. And hey, I'm sure we'll see you in the next couple of years. Well, until next time guys, have a good one. And I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.